Good morning and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining in. Today we'll be doing an art from Grace J Art. A very peaceful day is a landscape, which is very simple also. Uh, before we begin, let's give a word of thanks. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we praise you, we worship you, oh, Father God. Thank you so much for this blessed and beautiful morning, beautiful evening that you've given for everyone. And Lord, thank you for being with us in the past week and helping us walk through with every ways of our life, being with us and helping us, guiding us. Oh Lord, we give you thanks, Father. At this moment, we remember people who are suffering, who are going through various difficulties and who need your help and support. We ask you that you will be with them and help them. Father God, we commit everything into your hands. We pray and ask you that this time will be good for us to learn something new and to share with everyone else as well, Lord. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for helping us. We pray and commit and we ask all this in your mighty and precious name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, people. So let's begin. I just want to make sure I have everything here. Yeah. So as I said, we'll be doing the uh, painting from uh, Grace J. Art. And uh, if even if you want to learn something, uh, she has beautiful landscapes. It's very easy to learn and easy to do as well. Uh, so today's uh, painting, uh, we will be using a canvas, uh, which is again, eight by 10. I'm, I'm the one which I'm using here. I have a painter's uh, tape here, just in the right middle of the, uh, board uh, because I, I want the uh, top part to be with the sky uh, colors and then the down would be with the ground colors which is green and brown and all those shades so I have the tape I have the painters uh, tape that's been put here uh, and after that uh, the color the painting colors that we are going to use today would be for the sky we would be using um for the first layer it's a um, it's any blue, you can take any blue. It could be a flat of blue or it could be a light blue. It could be a dark blue, whatever it is. We're just gonna take a tinge of this blue with white. So make sure that you have uh, you have uh, white and blue, okay? And uh, along with that, the second layer is like, you know, uh, um, if you have a light pink, you can use light pink. Or if you have magenta, you can use magenta with with white and that would give you that uh, light pink shade. So we are gonna use this one. And then we have a purple. So purple again with the white, mix it up with white because this, this sky is gonna be very lighter pastel shades, it's not gonna be dark. So it's on the lighter side. Uh, for that, uh, make sure that you have white and purple mixed up. And that's the next layer that we will be adding in. And then comes your, uh, field itself for the field we it, you can do it in various uh, ways and colors uh, but i'm going to use a little bit of uh, lemon yellow i'm using a little bit of green whichever green like first is the light base that you're going to give in so it could be the uh, you know the monastral green or the light green that i have uh, after that comes your sap green or your dark green and then we can use your plateau green. Okay, so various types of greens that you could use for this field. Uh, whichever green that you have, all you're gonna mix is, is mix it with a little bit of brown or a little bit of black, and you can give the darker and the lighter shade. If you want white, we can give in white and give it more lighter shade there. So, and then we need black. Um, then we need, um, any kind of browns that you have, like I have your burnt sienna, burnt umber and the raw sienna. So you can use any kind of uh, browns that you have for the ground as well as the fence that is there in the picture and the tree bark. So we could give that. And the same dark green would be used for the light and dark green will be used for the tree leaves as well. So these are the colors that we are using in today. And then the brushes that we're gonna use, uh, I'm, I'm using, um, I'm using the, the flat brush. Okay, so you can use either this kind of a brush or you can use this kind of a brush. So this I'm using for the sky pot and the, for the grassy area, I'm gonna use uh, this kind of a, a brush, which is a flat brush. And I know if the bristles are, like this, it gives you a nice look when you're kind of drawing, when you're doing the grass. So I prefer to use this brush. And uh, so with that, I just, uh, 
Okay. I'm just trying to get some flat brushes out. Okay, so this is my two um, flat brushes that I have here, and then for the uh, and then for the sky inner skies, whichever you want to give in, you can use a filbert brush, which is which is either like this or like this. You can use a filbert brush. Even if you if you want to use, you can use a round brush too. So you can use any of these brushes. Okay. And then for the finer details of it, for the branch and for the trees, uh, leaves and everything, you can use thinner brushes or flat shaders. Uh, so any of these brushes will also do for it or a round brush will do, okay? Uh, now for the trees, it's uh, for the tree leaves, you could use a, a fan brush. It could be of any of these sizes. Like I'm just showing you different sizes, uh, which were have like this one, it's a thicker one. Uh, and for this, you could use it for if your panel is really big, you could use this kind of a brush because still for the tree, it can come out well. You don't have to dip the whole brush into the paint on the sides, you can use it. Or you could use this kind of a fan brush or you could use this kind of a fan brush, which is like, you know, uh, very thin, very small, like not too big, or you could use this one. So today I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I might use this one because it's got the bristles like that and I'm going to, my, my panel is not that big. So I might use this one. Okay, I'm just showing you. You can use any of these uh, fan brushes. And then we have two containers of water. So two containers of water. And then your uh, foam plate or your uh, ceramic plate. I have a ceramic plate. You could use a foam plate. That's just to mix the colors in. Um, so that would be used. And then your washcloth. Please to make sure that you have a washcloth to wipe all your brushes. Uh, so washcloth or a napkin, anything whichever serves you, uh, like you can use that. So that's what I have here. And with that, we could begin our painting. The first layer, as I mentioned, it's gonna be the, uh, sky, uh, sky. So we're going to do the blue, white, and the pink. That's what we're going to use here. And then later will be a purple. So to use that, I am taking in a little bit of the plateau blue. And I'll show you. I'm going to put it into my uh, palette. And again, you don't have to use so much but I'm not sure how big is your panel or how much is your, is your panel being observant. So you can use this. I'm using it along with white. So I have blue and um, yellow here, and I'm gonna use some, I'm gonna mix it up. So this is what I'm kind of mixing it up just to get that very, uh, not too light, but not too dark as well. Okay, and my panel is very observant. So I'm just using a little bit of water. Okay, so if I'm gonna go, so it looks like little more, it, it is darker shade. So I'm just gonna lighten it up with a little bit of white and don't worry if that blue is going to fall come down that's fine but i just want it to be a lighter shade and don't worry like you know uh, in between it can be dark in between it can be light because that's how the sky looks like okay and then i'm going to take a bit of white and just the white, okay? I'm not doing anything else, just the white. I'm gonna try to blend it along, okay? And as I'm blending it, I'm making it light and I'm bringing the colors down. Okay, just bring the colors down. And as you're doing it, I want you to take in the light shade of the pink as well, which we're gonna mix it with the White. I'm just taking it in the in the brush itself. Very light. Okay. All I need is very light. Okay. Not too much. 
and I'm going to have a little bit of water and more of white. So if you see, that will blend it. You don't have to worry about oh, it will, whether it will look nice or not. It will blend in. And if you're using it with the blue, it will give you that um, purplish color also. And make sure that you're blending and taking it up. Okay, that's all you have to do. Make sure that you're blending it along with that blue. So your sky, it should look like it's blended nicely. And wherever you find that there is a space that you need to blend it, please do make sure that you blend it. And whatever is there in your brush, you can take it down. So you have that light pink, it's not too dark, and it is a very light shade. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit of dark on the top part, uh, dark blue, just on the top, just to give a variation of the blue. And I didn't do anything, I just used the blue, which I had. And if you're using this brush, it, it really helps and like, you know, to give that uh, cloudy look. So that's all I did. I had white here, I had a pink, and then when you mix that pink, blue, and the white together, you might get a little light shade of that purplish hue here. And that's what I did. I'm gonna wash off my brush. And please make sure that you take only less paints here. And we are not using so much of paints, um, very less paints. Okay, and by now your paint should be dried because you're not using so much. Now, don't use so much of water as well. Uh, try to make it a little bit uh, drier side. So I've dried up my brush there. And, and now I'm gonna use the purple. So I'm just gonna see how much is it done here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to keep my painter's tape here because uh, I'm done with that. Okay, now for the purple, again, I, if you, if you want to mix it up with the, in the palette, uh, so that would be nice. So I'm just taking it up in the palette. Here, I'm just having a little bit of purple, very little, and I'm going to mix that with the white. And for that, I'm going to use my uh, filbert brush. I don't want it to be too dark, but I want it to be light shade of the purple. Okay. Just in the towards the sky horizon, I'm just gonna give that far away look of that sky. And all you're doing is with the brush, just go up and down a little bit. Just pull the brush. Give an uneven look. Okay, I'm not making it too straight here. Just when you're giving that far away look with the sky, I'm just trying to get that. Okay, just, just across the horizon. Okay. And it's not dark, it's very light, but it is a little bit darker than the above sky.
it's just a far away, you know, when you see from something afar, it, the sky and the sky looks a diff little different. And that's what we're trying to bring in here. Okay, make sure you, you're able to uh, bring it with a, you know, at least similar to a straight line down the uh, line. Okay. So even if it is a little bit dark on one side, it's fine. So just a very far away look. I hope everybody has got that. And then, okay. I'm kind of okay with it. It's kind of a blended look. If your sky looks really dark or something, you can always use white. Don't worry about it. Because when the painting is, when the, when it starts drying, that's when you see what's happening with your. Uh... So if you even if you use a little light white, uh, just to go and then you can you can you can use it as a sky, uh, cloud cloudy look. You can give it with a little bit blue if you want to give in. I, I'm trying to show you if in case your uh, if it if your uh, if your uh, what do you say. If your painting doesn't look the way that you really want to look, you can always make it work. Okay, you can always, always make it work. So never worry about, uh, oh my gosh, my painting doesn't look like the way it has to be looking. You don't have to worry when you, even if in your paint is dried, see well, that's what I'm doing. It's still, you can make it work. Still, it'll look nice. Okay, you don't have to worry about it. If your painting is dried and you feel like it's not up to the mark that you really wanted it to be, see, you can always make it work. And that's what I did now. I just wanted to show you that. So like, you know, you can, make, you can, you can do anything with your acrylic painting if you want to do it. It's not gonna be difficult. So now what I did was like, I just wanted to blend in more of white and I did that. And that, and I'm just bringing it like this cl clouds and skies and everything, and that's fine. Okay. See. So you could do it, and you know the sky is done, so it's good. Now let's come to the uh, bottom part. What we're going to do is we're going to use some uh, browns here. So let's see what kind of browns that we're going to use. We can use a light brown. So I'll, um, I'll, okay, I will show you what is that I'm trying to do. Uh, you can either uh, put it on the uh, panel directly or what I'm trying to do is I'm just gonna take, I have a raw sienna here. I'm just taking some of the raw sienna um, and I'm gonna use a light green and a little bit of brown, darker brown. I'll show you. So I'm gonna use, uh, what do I have here? I have burnt sienna, okay? I have burnt sienna and I will show you how much I use that also. Okay, burnt sienna and and it's gonna be a little bit of light green as well. So I have a I have the raw raw sienna burnt sienna as well as a little bit of green. I'm gonna use this this brush uh, the the flat brush that I was talking about and just dipping it a little bit of water. Little bit of water. I'm taking it. I'm taking the first the light brown. And if you can go like this. Don't worry about your uh, shades or what is happening. All I'm doing is just giving that first layer here. And if I'm using this brush, what happens in between itself, those strokes will come by. 
So I don't have to worry so much about, uh, you know, should I bring the strokes in or not? I'm using this brush so I can give in that strokes wherever I can. I just took a little bit of the color with the water. Make sure it is closer to the sky. And pull the paint with the water. So in between, you will find some strokes coming by. And then there is a lighter shade as well. And that's with the water I've done, OK? So it's not too dark. It's not too light. But it's just there, OK? And now, with the same thing, I'm going to use the green. I'm just use the green. If I, if I show you in the brush, there's very less of green. And then I'm just going to make sure I dip it here with a little bit of water. OK? So it's going to be very light and pull it down. Pull the strokes down so that it's not it's not standing out anywhere. And it's with the green. OK. It's a, what do you say? If you kind of do, do it with this kind of a brush, you can see the strokes coming out. I'm just taking all those other colors that was coming out. Using a little bit more of green, I'm just trying to bring in different shades of that field. That's all I'm trying to bring in. OK? That's it there. And now I would like to have some dark green. I'm taking a flato green. Flato green. I'm going to show you what I'm trying to do there. So with the flatter green, can you go from down to up? Like this. And don't worry, we will cover the fields completely. All I'm asking you to give the base colors before the dark shade of colors are going in. So this is the flato green. Okay, and as you're giving it, go in layers so that you know you can show that there is that uh, grassy layer that has been seen. So go in layers. And your stroke is going from down to up. And don't worry if it's going to go up. All I'm, all I'm asking you is to go from down to up. Give some layering. So you should be having a dark green layer at the bottom. Oh, 
okay? So if it's gonna be dark, it's fine. It's gonna be light, it's fine. Don't worry. All you're gonna do is just give that grass a little nice look. And please make sure that you're covering up completely everywhere. There's no white spots. That's all we have to do. And as you're giving in, now with the same brush, dip your same brush with that cream and then go in that layer where there is that white you can see. It's that light green that I've given. It's just above that dark green layer, okay? And I've used the same brush. I've not used anything else. It's the same brush. Uh, there was a brown in my palette, so it just, it just came along with it. But if you can just give it as a green, it's fine. So please make sure that there is no white spots that's seen. Mine, I can see so many white spots. Okay. And just to make sure that it's all covered up nice and neat, make sure wherever if you see that white spots, all you have to do is make sure that the, the greens, uh, greens are put in well. Okay, so now, you should be having something like this, which has got a light brown on the top, a very little lighter, less green, and then it is a little more darker green and a dark green. And then we are gonna make it a little more dark in the bottom layer with the same flatter green. And I'm going from down. So now when you see now, you should be having at least a couple of layers of that green, okay? It's with the plateau green only I'm doing. I've not done anything else. And make sure that your base is beautifully covered with this dark green. Okay. Okay, just move your brush from down to up. So now you could see that there is the greens happening. And now when you see, there's a very distinctive layer of the green and the white, there is that light, uh, what, what do you say? You can see the distinct layer there, right? So I'm gonna wash off my brush. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm now gonna blend all these colors nice and neat. And for that, I'm just gonna take my this brush, the one which I used for my sky. I'm gonna dip it into a little bit of the little bit of water. I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm just gonna dip it into a little bit of water. And if I can see, um, I'm just gonna make sure. I'm just gonna make sure it's not gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit blended out. So I'm just gonna take a little green and make sure I blend that top ends. So it's gonna be like, what do you say? Uh, all I'm doing is just to make sure that, you know, I can blend it and move it on the top of part. So you can go like this. You can either go with the up and down stroke or you can blend it, okay? You can do like that as well. So no, there is no right and wrong ways of doing it. All I'm trying to do is just to make sure that I blend it along very well. because there are more colors coming up, so don't worry about it. But I just wanna make sure that, you know, it doesn't look left out. That white spot in between doesn't look left out. And as you move along, just take that ochre lighter, uh, that ochre as well, and with a little bit of water. So you will be having that shade of green coming along, but that's fine. But you will have that brown shade as well. So now this looks more blended and it doesn't look like it's all very, very uh, different shades. And it's just with water, guys. It's just with water. It's with a little bit of ochre in the palette itself, what was there, and a little bit of uh, green what was there. 
So just to smoothen the look of it. Okay. Just to smoothen the look of it. And if you feel that it's still not uh, great, all you have to do is just go with your brush and then make everybody look neat and nice. Okay. See, so now you would be having very now distinct layer, but then that the white is not shown so much. Because mine, I could see the white coming up so not so much on the so much there. So all I was trying to do is not to make that white look more distinctively as white. So now we have a green, I have the brown layer, I have the dark green layer. Make sure you've, you, you've got it blended out and it's not too much of white anywhere and too much of, uh, uh, what do you say? Too much of uh, lightness seen. One minute. I'm just gonna make sure that my dark brown that I've given there. Yeah, I'm just giving in some, uh, some different shades there so that my brown is also seen nicely. Okay, so I'm kind, I'm kind of, okay with how the uh, leaves have come in or the, you know, the strokes have come in there. So I'm fine with it. So now, now the best part of it is, now with your green, I want you to, uh, with your dark and the light green, now we're gonna give some more shades of the, uh, where's my dark green? Some more shades of the uh, plant here on the down basis before we start putting the fencing. So I'm using dark green and I'm gonna use this, don't use the, uh, don't use this brush, but use your flat brush. I'll show you what I'm trying to say because we are gonna show some distinct greens that's coming up. Now with your green, there's a green here with your green, dip this, dip this flat brush. And then can you see? All I'm gonna do is just to make sure it goes from in between, just do some long strokes like this. And it's with the green only, I'm not doing with any other colors, but make sure the green is visibly seen. There should be a nice layers of greens at the seam. That's why I said, you don't have to worry about how the strokes are there because we're gonna fill up with everything. And I'm not sure how it is shown out. And wherever, if you see a block of a uh, thing that has been seen, just take with your brush, move it up so that you can make it as a uh, nice, good um, way of showing it, it's coming out from down. And uh, again, this is all the greens that I'm using and I'm not using any other colors here. It's just the green. I'm just giving some variation in my look of the grass that has been to be shown. Okay, I'm just gonna lift up my painting and then gonna fill up with that white spaces that I see with the green. Just 
just make sure there's no white spaces seen because when the painting dries, you can see the white spaces if, if it's not been filled up properly. Okay. Okay, guys. So I'm kind of okay with this. Okay. Now make sure you close your paint tops and uh, you've, uh, uh, you've, you've washed your brushes. Now let's begin with our fencing. So you have something like this. It's not done or anything. All we have done is given the base layers of everything. It's a, whether it's a ground, whether it is leaves, anything we have given a base layer and I've made sure that I washed my brushes. because we need these brushes again. So make sure that you wash your brushes, keep it dry, keep it nice and neat. And now I take my filbert brush. Uh, I think I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm using this kind of a filbert brush, which is eight uh, simply cements. Okay, I'm using that brush and the brown that I have here, I'm just gonna use that brown along with that uh, lighter brown. Too much on the darker side. So take that and then I'm going to make sure that I'm able to because the green is not a dried so you would be able to see that uh, it's just blending along the uh, post here. So you can go give a head how much ever you want to give the post and how tall you want to give it, okay? So I'm just gonna go maybe to a little bit of higher than those greens. And I'm not putting it till the down because it's already filled with that green, right? So I'm just trying to blend that post along with that green. So it's lots of, what do you say? It, it's covering up, the grass is covering up all the pole ends. And make sure your pole is a little bit thicker. Okay. And if it's dark, if, if it's going to be too dark, don't worry, we're going to use some shading there. So all I'm now I'm asking you is just if you can please give some uh, poles here. And it will blend it, blend it along with the, uh, with your uh, uh, gr uh, grass. Okay, almost it's the same height, I think, yeah. And your poles, like, you know, if you've seen the poles, it's not gonna be like too straight line, right? It's gonna be a little bit of, you know, you will have the bumps and everything. So you can do that as well. Okay. So first let's give the outline of it outline of the fence that we are doing. And I'm using the same brown. I've not done anything else. Okay, but please make sure you use the browns and it is, uh, the fencing are all like nice and thick. Okay, and don't worry, we would shade it in. So, you know, even if it's gone away, if it's not in the way that it has to be of whatever you feel like, we can make it all work together. Okay, the next one goes.
So can you see now? It's going to be light. It's fine. All we're going to now do is just to make sure that we can do the fencing part. Okay. So with that, make sure uh, your fence, the, the stand, the, the, the vertical one looks above the one which has gone on horizontal. Okay. Again, the paints may not have been uh, dried, so you would still see the green sets coming up. That's fine. Okay, if it is too dark, uh, too light, you can always bring in your uh, browns in. So you've got that light shade coming in, you've got the darker shade, and then towards this, the fence, the each part of that fence itself, like if you can make sure that though they are they have been very nicely done. Okay. So you should be having something similar to this. Now, make sure that you wash off that brush. And then you're going to use a little bit of uh, black or a dark brown. If you have a, a brown, like, you know, I have a dark brown. I'm going to, I'll show you. I have a burnt umber. It looks a little bit dark. I'm going to use that just to give that little darker tint to the to my, um, uh, this one. If your paint is not dried, it's not gonna show up much here. So maybe if you want to wait till it is dried, it's fine. I just wanna wait little, little till it dried because mine is still showing as uh, it's not dried up. So I'm just gonna wait till I give the other shade. But as I'm gonna wait for it, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm gonna fill my grass lay, uh, grasslands now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my pan brush, okay? And with the light green that we have here, right? So if you use the fan brush, I'm just putting it near the, um, uh, what do you say, near the fence areas. So it shows a little distinctive color when you're using a fan brush. And if you're using that, uh, and if your paint is not yet dried, you would be able to get that greens nicely. So this is with light green, okay? Not any other colors. It is just with the light green. And all I'm trying to do is just near those fans, I'm trying to darken that shade of green. And if you put it here and there, it looks natural. Like there is some greens happening. That's why I said you don't have to cover that pole completely. Because it's going to be blended in between. It's not going to be seen completely uh, roughened out. That's with your light green. So make sure that you put it here and there, wherever you could. Okay, now we need to give some flowers and stuff. So I just wanna see, uh, I'm just gonna put in a little bit of more greens there. Mm. 
and do it in a different, like, you know, tall leaves, small leaves. Okay. See? You can make it look more natural with the way that you use your brush. And it's a very, very feather light strokes. You're not putting any pressures anywhere. So I'm just using that same fan brush and I'm trying to bring that greens out. And as the painting gets dried, you would be able to see that, you know, it's, it's really shown around. Yeah. And with the same brush, with the same thing, now I'm going to make sure with that same green, if you kind of do some stroked lines, just in different places, you can find the, oh, what do you say, a different kind of a plant that's coming by, right? You can either go with that. This is one way of doing it, which I showed you now. Or you can use a thin um, round brush and then do it. And this is again only with the light green that I've done. I've not used any other colors. I've not done anything else. All with that same light green. You could bring that shades, different shades anywhere, however you want to do it. You could do it with a small brush as well, or you could do it with your, uh, with, with, the, with the fan brush. Okay, now I'll show you how to do it with your you know, other brushes that you have. So I'm taking the very thin uh, round brush here, and I'm gonna mix it up with a little bit of white and that green to give another shade here, okay? and. From the bottom, I'm just using more of the dark green and white. Okay, and you know, you can put it from down up from here. I'm just going to put some white flowers as well there or yellow flowers. So I just want to make sure that, you know, I have that. Um, it doesn't have to be distinctively uh, coming out, but then it's just a, what do you say, different, a different form of a green that's been shown. Okay. So it's just with that green and white I'm doing. Okay, and not everywhere, uh, wherever you feel like you want to give some green, you want to give some flowers, you're going to make this talk look different. And that's all I'm trying to do. Because if you see in a field also, or in a place where you see, it, wild flowers may grow everywhere or it may not be going anywhere. I'm just trying to bring some differentiation between those plants.
and then a lighter shade, that's all. And make sure that leaves are looking like leaves. Okay, and now if you like white flowers, if you like green flowers, or if you like uh, yellow flowers, we can put in whatever uh, flowers that you really like to put it in. I'm just gonna use some yellows. Your flowers can be in any shape. Please do not worry about your flower shapes here. Wild flowers can be in any, any shape. Okay. I'm just doing it here and there as a buds, as you know, small, small uh, dots. However, you, whatever you feel like, go ahead and do it. Just wherever you feel like you want to give some flowers, go ahead. And any flower shape, please. You don't have to worry so much about your flower shape. I'm just trying to bring in some colors there. That's all. And if you see, I'm not giving any particular shape here. It's just flowers. And if you give it in a very light stroke, it will be nice. You don't want to go too much on dabbing the paints anywhere. So that's all I'm, you know, kind of bringing in some flowers, some buds. See? And you don't have to take too much of paints anywhere at all. But make sure it is near the stalk, near the leaves and stuff. So at least to say that there is a connection between the stalk and the flower. Okay. You like to add some white into that? Go add white, no issues. As I said, it's your flower, it's your plant. Your imagination is good and you're doing well. I think I'm, I'm, I'm okay with my flowers. I don't want to do too much into the flower stuff. I have some flowers and I'm happy with them. Here and there, I put some white, I put some yellows. It's, it's just that what you want to do. And then to make sure my stock looks nice, you know, I'm just gonna, uh, you know, if you have some greens left or greens in your palette and everything, make sure that you can, if you want to draw some nice more stocks uh, going in, going out, just to highlight it more, then do it, go ahead and do it. Okay, uh, you can have some long, strands of stuff going around. That's up to you, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm kind of okay with my flowers that's come out. Now, I just wanna, uh, what do you say? In the background, I can see that my green doesn't look great green. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna use my, the thin brush that I've got, right? And I'm taking it directly from the dark green, just to make sure I have some, Some dark greens here and there that is so seen as a plant itself. Okay, that's all I'm trying to do with the dark green. Nothing else, guys. Very lightly, if you use your brush, you can give that look. Very lightly. Okay, just in the places where you feel that you know you want to uh, highlight it more or bring more. Uh, texture, texture, and you know definitions to that plant. Just depend dots. That's it. 
Okay, so when you see from afar, it looks nice. See, all I did was like th those strokes which was there, which looked uneven for me, I just made it a little bit more visibly seen. So it doesn't look like it's it's as so standing away uh, without any reasons. And with that in between, just give some uh, strokes there. And it's again with that same dark green that I'm doing, I'm not doing anything else. Okay. Because near those fences, I'm just trying to bring that, uh, what do you say, a look saying that there's lots of greens that's happening there. There's lots of tall grasses. And make sure you're bringing it out here as well. The more you're trying to do is that you're trying to bring that natural way of seeing the leaves and the plants. And in this side, I'm not doing much because I'm gonna fill it up with a tree. Okay, so now your uh, brown should be looking good. And now just with that same thin brush, I'm just gonna take a little bit of dark brown. Uh, I'm trying to give that shade of that uh, fencing look, the fencing, uh, that bark there. Just go with that little bit of brown in between so that you know you can sh you can you can show that it is not a very straight uh, uh, browns there. Just using a little bit of your light and dark brown that you had with the same green that is there in my brush. I'm not doing anything with that. Okay. And try to use a little thicker paints to show the thickness of that bark itself. Okay. And as the painting, as the paint dries, we can do more towards it. Don't worry. So for now, I'm just trying to make sure that, you know, I've, I've given some layering towards it. So it looks more thicker bark. And again, before I finish it, probably I'll use a little bit of black to make it look really rustic and old. Okay, and the same goes for that, uh, this one also. Even if you don't put it everywhere, at least make sure it is there somewhere. Okay, so there is a difference that's seen in there. And when you use thick paints, you actually can feel it also, like the bark and everything. So just to make it a thick, thick looking bark. And don't worry if it is too light, we will darken it. We will use a little bit of black and then make sure it's coming out well. I'm just gonna take a little dark, a uh, little bit of black. And when you're touching it along with that browns, what happens? It will give that, it will give a rustic look, very rustic look. Because no box, you're gonna have it as the same uh, browns or black or anything like that. There will be lots of color difference that's been shown. And as it dries, we can kind of work on it. Okay. So there goes my bark, that fencing bark, which looks different. All I did was little bit of browns, little bit of black in betweens, introduce those colors.
Okay, and if it is too dark, always you have your browns to use. So use your browns. If it is too light, yeah, if it is too light, use the brown, uh, use a darker shade. If it is too dark, use a lighter shade. Okay. It's up to you, your bark, so you can do it whatever you want to do. Don't worry about it. And I've uh, done my bark and I'm okay with it. Okay. So that's kind of good enough for me. Now let's do the fields. So we are almost there. So let's do the fields with a little bit of bumps here and there to show some greens, to show some colors happening there. So what we're gonna do is take your light, take your thin brush and with uh, white and a little bit of uh, gray, uh, a little bit of ochre or the light browns, what you have there. I'm just gonna use some white. Let's show you what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Okay. So a little bit of brown and a little bit of white. Just go. Um, just like how you feel that if you see in a very far away, there can be fields which has that uh, shades of brown and shades of greens. Okay, now with your brush, make sure you have lots of white into it. White and brown. Okay, it's not too dark, but at the same time, I'm trying to make sure that I can give some uh, whites and make it like, it looks like, you know, um, field, a brown field. But with that highlight of white. Because we'll be drawing some, we'll be putting some, adding some greens there as well. It may not be visibly seen, but when you see a painting from near, you could, you could see that. And all I've done was with the brown, nothing else. So brown and white in between here and there, wherever you feel like. Okay. Not too much, but then just in that, in that spacing level. Okay. Now, as that has been done, I want to make sure I give a very far away look of that trees and that, you know. So there I'm going to use some brown that light brown. And with my thin brush, if you can see, all I'm doing is just dipping and dotting to draw some tree kind of thing. Very, very thin light. You can use that brown, nice brown. So give that very far away look that something happening there. Okay, if it is too dark, please make sure that you have your whites. It's just near the horizon, okay? It's just near the horizon. Okay, just very far away look. And even if you want to pull up a paints like this, you can do that. Okay, just very, very far away look here and there so that you know it's it's there, it's you can see that it's happening. Okay. 
Okay. So when you see from here, yes, something is happening in the field, but you don't know what exactly is there. So you see that there's a, there's lots of brown trees there. There is something going on. Okay. And that's all I try to do. And then, you know, slowly come towards the field side. It's not too... Uh, uh, visibly seen, but it's somewhere in the in, in between you see that you can add some rounds. Very far away look. So when you see from afar, yes, something is happening there. Now with your uh, with your uh, sap green or with your light green and little bit of uh, uh, darker green also you can do. I, all I'm trying to do is I'll show you what I'm trying to do there. With that green, just again only very lightly in some mounts and places you can draw some greens please go ahead and do that okay wait i'm i know it's not been shown nicely but okay just in between not so much not so dark not so light but there is something happening with the green okay so uh, what we're trying to do is show that there are some plants and you know mounts of some, something happening there. Okay. And that you can do, do it with the green. I'm doing it with a sap green. Okay, so very light, they don't have to be very dark. All we're trying to do is make that field also look nice, not just the background. Okay, so make that field look nice. And uh, yeah. So it's your imagination how you want to give in, what is going to happen here. Nobody is saying anything like it should be like this, it should not be like this. My field is looking like this, that's all. So it's your choice how you want to give your field into. Okay. And wherever, like it's not that everywhere you should be putting it. If you don't want to put it, it's up to you. And just drag those paints a little bit here and there, giving that mounted look and with that browns and greens. Okay, so I think the far away look is good. It's nice. Okay, I'm not going to worry so much about my uh, stuff, uh, but maybe, you know, I'm just going to use a little bit of that brownish green ochre, this one, and then, you know, kind of make it somewhere here, there. Okay, just to make sure that that field is also there. Now comes the tree part, the big tree that you see in the picture. So let's see how we're gonna draw the tree. So now for the tree, I would like to take the brown and the black, a little bit of mixed with the black and the brown. Uh, so it's the black and the brown. Okay. And with a little bit of more of water so that it can flow around. And I'm making sure that uh, my tree can go from here, from, from here. It's your tree. Please make sure that you do whatever you want to do with your tree. Okay. I am, I'm going to make sure that. Mm 
Okay. So as I said, it's your tree. How are you going to make it look? It's yours. I'm just giving the uh, trunk part of it and making sure I have some browns to go in. Uh, so brown and black, you can do dark brown as well, whatever color works for you. Uh, but I'm just going to give a darker shade of the trunk. Okay, I'm going to make it a little more thicker. And this is all with the black and the brown. I've still not introduced any other colors here. And as I said, your tree trunk, it will look beautiful whatever way you want to give it in. Okay. So that's my tree trunk. And I'm going to make sure that I put in something more of the thicker trunk there. Okay. Maybe if you want to give it a more defined, defined way of doing it, go ahead. And now start doing all your trunks, uh, the branches and stuff. Okay. So that's what you're going to do now. And make sure you have it uh, going across. Let's see how much we can do that. And uh, as you can do any kind of a trees here, guys, you whichever way you want to draw paint in, okay? And please make sure you're not drawing anything straight. Um, make sure there's a bend, curves, everything possible in the tree. And move your brushes lightly. Okay. So just making it look more natural. OK. 
Yeah. And you know, if if you feel like the tree is standing so much more, however you want to do, it, please go ahead and do it. All I'm doing is with my filbert brush, I'm making sure that, you know, I move my brushes irregular. I'm not moving my brushes in the same, same way. It's irregular. And then as I'm doing it, I'm just gonna give, make sure that I add a little bit of texture towards my tree. So adding a little bit of white. Just as I'm doing it, I'm not doing any separate uh, stuff here. Just as I'm doing it, I'm just introducing a little bit of white to the paint itself, to the uh, black. See? And when you do it along with the way that you're doing, uh, you're doing the strokes, it, it looks natural. and use some dark colors. Because we are gonna fill up with the leaves now, okay? So make sure your branches are thick in the beginning and then it, it it tapers down because as it comes by, that's what you're, you're trying to show here. And you can draw in between lines. Okay. See? Uh, more you give tree branches everything a look that you want to give it, it looks nice. And however you want to do it, you can do it. Okay, so somewhat my tree, I'm fine with my tree. I've given my enough of shades that's going in black and browns and everywhere. Uh, I'm go good with it, okay? So now I take off my filbert brush off. I'm taking my fan brush again, my fan brush, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use dark green. I'm gonna use dark green and a little bit of uh, black as well. I'll show you what I'm going to do that. So dark, dark green and uh, black. Okay, there's a little bit of uh, black and green. So with the brush, if you see, I'm, I'm just, I'm not doing anything more, just making sure I'm um, touching my branches with that leaf, uh, with, with, the, with the brush. Okay. So when you kind of do that dip and dots kind of style, it the leaves will look like it's separated out, but still there will be leaves. Okay, and more it comes closer, the more you will find it uh, more clustered.
and do it along with those branches wherever you've put in. So it looks it's coming from the branches. And if you run your brushes up and down like this, then you can get that look also. So dip your brush again with the black and the green. Okay. As you see, I'm not painting here. I'm just dipping in dots here with the green and the black so that in between you can see the black and the green coming out. Dip your brush again, wherever you find that it is not coming in the tips and dots. And make sure that you put point it in the way where the branches is coming out. Okay, and as you go up on the top, it's gonna to be getting more clustered. Okay, you don't have to make sure that your tree is full bloomed with leaves and everything. There could be a time when there is the tree is completely barren. Okay. See, that's all I'm putting in. I'm not putting anything else here, maybe in between. Okay. So make it look like, you know, the tree has got some leaves, but it's all not so much there. And, but it's still there. And that's what the look that you're gonna give. Okay. So I'm gonna make sure that I have some leaves, some greens going on everywhere. I've just used green and the black. So in between, you can see the black being highlighted. And that's what I said, you don't have to worry so much about your background here because we're gonna fill it up something here on the trees. You should be okay with it. And if you use your dark green in just in the tips here, the leaf, the branch will look like so. Yes, the leaves are happening and things are happening here. Okay. And near closer to those branch sites, you can put in a little bit of more greens. Okay. Just coming out from here, coming out from there. Depend dots. Okay. See now your now if your this one is done. And I what I want to do is just to come here and uh, here as well. I just want to make sure that you know, towards my fencing time, there is something happening there too. Okay, and near my tree, uh, tree bottom, lots of other stuff has been there. I'm using the same fan brush. I'm not doing anything else, okay? And then with the same fan brush, I'm just gonna lift up my panel and then make sure I give some, that same thing I give a rundown down, rundown here. So see, 
the beautiful landscape is done. Now, if you want to give some flowers and if you want to do some, some uh, different take on it, you can do with a little bit of white. I'll show you what I'm trying to do. Just in the flower side. See, I'm just making it a little bit more on a highlighted portion with a very little So you can see there is flowers happening, there is leaves there. And if you want to give any other colors, please go ahead and do it. It's up to you, okay? I I'm fine with this. I'm not gonna go any other colors here, but I'm okay with this. Okay, so basically we are done with our painting. So you can, Go ahead and do different colors if you want to do. Uh, if you want to bring in more highlighted portion of the fans or with the greens, you can go ahead and do it. But as a simple painting, I would like to show you that you can do a landscape with just few colors and then bringing out what exactly you're trying to show in that vicinity, like you know how uh, far or near you can see things happening. So that's what we've we've brought in here and if you feel any colors are dark you can always lighten it with a lighter shade as well so this is for me for today i hope you enjoyed it and i'll give you some time so that you can do your uh, part of your imagination as well okay i'm gonna stop the recording now and i'll be happy to take any questions later okay thank you and i will see you next week again with another interesting painting.